Welcome in, Hokie Nation, and welcome to this week's Triumph Spotlight on TSL Today. Spring is upon us, and the Hokies are stacked on the diamond. We've got Virginia Tech sophomore pitcher Emma Lemley in the studio. We can't wait to get things going. Emma Lemley coming up next on Triumph Spotlight. It's TSL Today on a Monday from Blacksburg. Today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. Triumph NIL was founded to create meaningful name, image, and likeness partnerships for student-athletes. Triumph seeks to maximize individual and group earning potential and provide clarity to key stakeholders through creative activations. Their motto, and it's a good one, Nick, I like this one, recruit, retain, reward. That is Triumph NIL. We can't thank them enough for this awesome partnership. Giovanni Heater here with you. Join alongside Nick Brown. We'll be calling softball uh, for Learfield this season, so this is an exciting one. It's like double dipping. We get info for this and that, and uh, of course, across the way, Virginia Tech sophomore pitcher Emma Lemley on set today. Emma, how you doing? So good to have you. Thank you. Good. How are you guys? Good. Join yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right. Well, late congratulations on an incredible freshman season. 30 appearances, 23 starts, national freshman of the year, top three finalists. What was last season like for you in a nutshell? Um, it's definitely a learning experience. Um, you know, getting to play with Keely, um, learning a lot from her. Um, obviously, the competition level from, you know, high school ball to college is like, a huge jump. Um, so there are definitely some growing pains, but it was so fun. One of the best times I've ever had. Um, so yeah, really good. I guess this could be two years late to ask you this, <laughs> but uh, obviously you're Virginia. I uh, came to Virginia Tech. What was the recruiting process like? Did you grow up liking Virginia Tech or did mm-hmm. you uh, not like the Hokies like a lot of Virginia people do? <laughs> uh, or what was the whole recruiting process like? Um, my recruiting process was weird because I actually committed in the eighth grade um before the rules changed and before the coaches changed (laughs) so I think I was 13 or about to be 14 it was right before my 14th birthday yeah (laughs) wow (laughs) yeah that is wild yeah I was in the eighth grade I committed and then um the rules changed to where then you couldn't commit till September 1st of your junior year and then the coaches changed so basically I had to go through the whole recruiting process again Mm. Um, kind of like my 10th grade going into my junior year. And so then I got recruited again by the new coaches, by Coach Pete. Um, so, yeah. And you always wanted to be at Virginia Tech? Uh-huh. Well, uh, <laughs> what other schools were involved? Um, I was thinking maybe Georgia Tech, um, but really my eyes were really just set on Virginia Tech. Um, I grew up a West Virginia fan, um, Ooh. but they don't have softball. <laughs> yeah, uh, but when I was little, I always wanted to go play basketball at West Virginia because okay. my dad and my sister went there. Gotcha. But, uh, kind of did a 180, went to Virginia Tech instead to play <laughs> softball. So You mentioned Keely Rochard. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit? What was it like playing mm-hmm. with her, learning from her, uh, and just sharing the circle with her? She was like my big sister, honestly, last year. Um any question I had for her, I could ask her. I roomed with her, like, every weekend on the road. Um, so any type of, like, problem I had or, like, situation, I could just ask her and be like, okay, what what should I have done? Or how could I, you know, do better next time? Um, so just having her as kind of, like, a mentor my freshman year was so helpful. Like, I don't know if I would be where I am now if I didn't have, like, guidance from Keely. She was like a fifth year, and so that was that was really cool. You said she was a fifth year. It felt like she was here for 20 years, and I'm sure for <laughs> opposing fans, she felt like she was here forever. Mm-hmm. Now she's gone. You're the ace this year. What's it like being the top dog? Uh, definitely, I think I had to kind of develop more of a sense of maturity um, kind of over the off season and stuff. Um, I kind of knew in my exit meeting last year, they said I'd have to, you know, take on a bigger role this year. Um, so kind of just – mentally preparing myself for that bigger role that I would have to take on, maybe having to pitch a few more games, um, kind of having to take the freshman pitchers under my wing, even though I'm only a year older than them. Um, just kind of getting a little bit more mature on the field. It's kind of just something I had to develop. Is there a pressure that those expectations bring for you at all, or are you ready to go? Um, 
I don't think so. I I like pressure situations. Um, I don't know. I've never really been one to like give in to the pressure. I just kind of accept it for what it is. Um, so I don't know. I just kind of take it one step at a time go with it. Well, pitch gate. Everybody wants to know about it. <laughs> the crow hopping. I mean, that's oh, the gosh. big question. I know everybody watching this is wants to know. Yeah. During the off season, you eliminated it. I did. What was that process? Um, so when I got home this summer, um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but like my dad was my pitching coach my whole life until I got to college. Um, so we kind of worked on some stuff. He had some ideas. He was like, let's just try this. Um, you don't have to like pitch full out. I know this is your off time, but, um, let's just try a few things. So like, I'd like step over the power line, they call it. So he was like, let's just try to get to that spot quicker, um, rather than jumping out and then over. Um, so we tried that and that helped a little bit. And then once we got back to school, um, we did a bunch of like mobility testing and stuff. And I apparently have, uh, kind of immobile hips. So, (laughs) um, my, yeah, my foot like couldn't get down. So, um, I had to get my knee closer to the ground. Mm. So I just had to bend my knee more. Um, so we worked on that. It took probably about three weeks to actually become comfortable with it. Um, but it's, it's fixed now so, <laughs> and it's been two weekends and I haven't gotten called <laughs> for it. So. What is that? What is that like when, like, I just can't imagine, um, having to completely kind of gut everything you've done, like everything that's got you to this point and change how you throw a pitch. Um, how difficult was that? And how are you kind of able to adjust? Um, I wouldn't say it's like too different. Um, cause the way like I got called for illegal pitches, my back foot came off the ground, but it came down on the top of my foot, not like on the bottom and then pushed off. Um, so it wasn't like too terribly hard to change. Um, it was really just kind of driving my knee down into the ground, but it really threw my timing off uh, for the those three weeks. And I was like, at first I was like, I am never going to be able to throw a strike again. I was like, do I have the yips? Like yeah. I'm throwing balls crazy all of a sudden. Um, but, you know, we just kind of stuck with it. I was like, I have to fix this because, um, you know, even if they let up on the rule this year, like I would rather just have it fixed. So it's not even a question. So we just stuck with it. And yeah, so now it's fixed. <laughs> Well, when you do make it pro, do you think you're going to go back to the old way or stick with what you got going? Um, I think it would, honestly, it would be more of just like a don't even have to worry about it. Just, you know, just just, just throw. Fair enough. Well, you said the last two weekends you have not been called for it at all. Not one bit. Last weekend, well, I guess that was yesterday. You got back from Clearwater. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice weather. How was was it down there? It was great down there. Um, I honestly think our hottest day was... Yesterday was Sunday. Um, the rest of the days, I got to pitch the later games, the night games. So it was it was pretty cool while I was <laughs> pitching. <laughs> um, um, but uh, we, I mean, we played some great teams, some you know, top ten, top five ranked teams. Um, I think our hitters did really well. I mean, I think we all kind of took something to improve on um, for this week going into Texas next week. Um, but you know, I'm I'm. Even though it might not have been the results we expected, I am really proud of my team. Like, they they did really well. When did you guys get back in town? Like, quick turnaround and you're already in here doing interviews. Yeah, we got back at about 1 a.m. last night. Wow. Um, i pretty sure I pulled up to my house and I got right in bed. And I just fell right asleep. <laughs> Folks, we're recording this at 1 in the afternoon. So that's a 12-hour <laughs> turnaround before uh, being right here. What does it say about this program uh, to be invited to a big invitational like mm-hmm. this? And then you got another one coming up. Just what does it say about what is being built here in Blacksburg to be amongst the top teams in the country? Yeah. Our, I would, I mean, Coach Pete has really built our program up. Um, and I think that was one of the, like, the reassuring things when I committed here was just seeing like how much of an improvement he was making to our program. Um, but to, I mean, to get to play these, you know, it's like, playing playoff games in February. Um, And it really gives you a chance to see where you are right now and see what improvements we have to make. Um, But, you know, just seeing where our team is right now, um, I'm really, you know, I'm really happy where our team is right now and like how hard they work and stuff. So I'm really excited for the rest of the season. Yeah. 
took on some of the big dogs down there. You've got yeah. another one, the National Runners Up. Mm-hmm. What are you guys doing, taking away from this weekend to prepare for Texas? Um, I think me specifically, um, I think one thing we kind of talked about was making my worst five pitches better. Yeah. Um, you know, I threw a lot of good pitches, but if we can make the worst pitches I threw better, it will, I mean, the game will turn out better. I won't give up as many hits, um, you know, get more outs, less runs, stuff like that. Um, but I th- mean, I think our hitters did really well down in Clearwater. So I think they're just trying to take that same mentality, um, out to Texas. Um, our pitchers did really well too. Um, Lindsay and Bree and Molly through too. So they did really well. Um, so, you know, I think we're all just trying to stick with what we know, kind of make some improvements, um, and take it to Texas. Tell us about the culture a little bit. You know, things don't mm-hmm. go your way in Clearwater, um, mm-hmm. maybe all across the board, but still a, a great showing, no doubt about it. So what is the unity like? What's kind of the vibe of this team, um, you know, to get back at it and stay yeah. hungry and go play again this weekend? I really think that we trust each other, um, especially on a team, you know, this big. I think we have 25 girls on our team. Wow. It's really hard for everybody to, you know, trust each other when you have a group that big. But I really do think that, you know, we have a lot of trust in each other. Um, and I think that really shows on the field. Um, we're really close on and off the field. So, like, when we're on the field, it's all business. Um, but when we're off the field, it's like they're the most fun people I've ever met, uh, the funniest people I've ever met, too. Um, so I think it's um, like they're able to also take away positives from the game, even if we lost. Let's focus on positives, but also let's focus on what we can improve on. Um, but honestly, just being around them, feeling that, you know, that unity, that team unity and that trust that all of us have in each other really just, you know, helps us kind of fuel ourselves for the next game. What's different culturally and on the field different from last year about this year? Um, I don't really know if there's much different. I mean, we were really close last year too. Um, I think that's just something that, you know, we try to keep improving every year is just, you know, how close we are, um, how much trust we have in each other. Um, you know, just, I think this year we might be more focused kind of in the present moment. That's something we, we read a lot of books on like confidence and saying in the present moment in, um, the fall. So I think that's something that we kind of have improved on this year is just staying in the present. Don't worry about the past. You can't change it. You know, we're just staying in the present moment. Can't look ahead too far. So I think that's something that's really improved this year. Well, the pitchers that you guys are putting out there look a little bit different this year. What can mm-hmm. you say about that and in, in your pitching room and, um, some new faces in the circle? Yeah. yeah um, Lindsay Grind, she's a freshman. Um, she's doing really well. Um, yeah, she's gone out there against some really big teams. They throw her out there against, you know, some of the top teams in the country, and I think she's done really well handling that. Um, I'm sure you guys know Bree. She's our mm-hmm. third baseman. She's also throwing some this year. Um, so she's, you know, she's handling that really well, having to play <laughs> all positions basically and hit at the same time. So um, she's doing really well. And then Molly, too, has stepped up and has gotten some innings, and she's been throwing really well. So um, that's another thing with, like, the trust. I mean, the whole team, we trust each other, but, like, the pitching staff, that's, like, another level of, like, trust that we have to have in each other. Like, if I have a bad game, I know that, you know, Lindsay, Bree, or Molly can come in and, you know, have my back and finish out that game and, you know, vice versa. So there's a big sense of trust within the pitching pitching staff. This is a Triumph spotlight with uh, Tech Sidelines, so we got to ask you, yeah. what is your partnership like with Triumph and uh, how have they helped you navigate the new mm-hmm. NIL world? Um, it's definitely kind of kicked up, you know, since the season is starting. Um, you know, one thing I've always kind of wanted to do was t-shirts. I've had so many family <laughs> members and friends ask me, you know, when are you going to get out t-shirts and stuff? So we are working on that um, to kind of get some t-shirts out for the home opener and um, mm. for, you know, when our uh, series games start, our conference games start. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, you guys have to get some <laughs> MLMly t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, I'd, I'd wear it. We'll be broadcasting yeah. on them. Can we wear that in the booth? Is uh, that it's up to Evan? Yeah, we gotta, <laughs> Evan Hughes makes the decisions on yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm really, really excited about that, and um, 
you know, I just had a phone call with them the other day and they've been really good about like updating me about where we are on stuff. And yeah. Is there any uh, opportunity maybe in the NIL world? Like now's your time to kind of plug it um, besides the T-shirts that you're like, man, I'd love to do something with that company locally or mm-hmm. um, I'd love to do something with that charity organization or anything like that off the top of your head. Um, I love doing community service. Um, when I was in high school, I did like pitching lessons just like for free um, for, you know, like volunteer stuff. Um, I love getting out in the community and if I could – it's kind of hard during season because we're gone so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of our time is on the road. Um, but I would love to do something with, like, younger athletes, um, uh, like younger, you know, female athletes uh, that maybe have an interest in softball, something like that. So that would be really cool. What has it been like? Um, there's kind of been such a new focus on the mm-hmm. softball program. I mean, you talk about literally adding bleachers last year for the regional and the super regional and, and tech softball park was packed. And um, now all of a sudden the games are on the radio for the first time and um, you know, top 10 rankings and everything like that. What is that attention and kind of spotlight on the softball program been like? Honestly, I mean, we love it. Uh, we love all the fans there. I mean, at the games last year, at the playoff games, seeing so much maroon and orange out there was, it's crazy. Um, you know, and just like after I would strike somebody out, just hearing how loud the crowd would get was like, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> we we love that. Um, but honestly, I think just the way that softball has grown as a sport and, uh, you know, the more appreciation softball as it's like as a sport is getting is is great. Um, it yeah, it's great for female athletes. And, you know, we we really appreciate all the love and support that we get here at Virginia Tech. All right. Well, I think it's time to move into some fun stuff here before okay. we let you go. A couple uh, on the fly type questions. All Nick, right. I'll let you lead us off. Well, first off, I want to, you said you loved the, the, the loud roar after you strike someone out. Is it more satisfying to get a loud roar or to stop the opposing team's chants and the clapping in the dugout when they're mm. clapping for the batter? Stop the opposing. <laughs> I I yell when I pitch, so I get made fun of quite often. <laughs> we uh, it's funny you say that. When we first met Coach Demore and talked yeah. to him for a while, he talked about in depth. He was like, "Yeah, we don't do that. We're not chanting yeah, we in don't. our dugout. Yeah, no, That's not don't. our character." So it's I'm funny. St- Oklahoma State, great program, and you know. Love you guys, but I had to mute that game. That was, that was oh, man. I, I wish I could have muted that game myself when I was there. We felt bad for you guys and all the other fans that were there in attendance. Uh, but, yeah, some fun stuff. You're not a batter. You're not a no, hitter. I'm but not. what would be your walk-up song? Oh, oh. Okay, so I actually do have walk-out songs to the mm-hmm. mound this right, year. Yeah. It's Ready For It by Taylor Swift and <laughs> Poker Face by Lady Gaga. <laughs> So, so <laughs> that's awesome. I, but I have a question for you. We've been told that it would be a sin to call it the mound. You are a pitcher and you just called it the mound. Is it the mound or is it the circle? No. Or uh, I've Do been you told care I, what it's called? I don't care. We're calling it We're, either. I, I'm I calling don't it the really circle care. because the bosses have told us that. <laughs> I've heard, I've been told it's a circle. I guess it is a circle. I guess we don't have a mound. Right. But I don't know. Habit, watching baseball my whole life. Just, it's the mound. It's the same thing. Fair enough. Fair you enough. heard it here. Emily does not care. <laughs> she can call it whatever you want. All right. <laughs> Pre-game playlist. What's it looking like? Uh, lots of Taylor Swift. Um, not what I would have expected for a pre-game. Reputation by Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. Um, I always have to listen to I Did Something Bad off of Reputation by Taylor Swift. Okay. Um, if you haven't heard that song, go listen to it. That's like, I have to listen to that song. Um, and then it's... It's really just a, a mix of, you know, whatever Taylor Swift I'm feeling that day. Will you be seeing any of this upcoming tour? Oh, yeah, I have tickets. There you go. I waited Whoa. in the... I, I, <laughs> I, we, had, um, we had Lyft that morning, and I didn't have time to make it home before the pre-sale opened because I got a code. And so I was sitting in the softball indoor for three hours waiting in line for tickets. Wow. And so on June 17th, my mom, my dad, and I are going to see Taylor Swift in Pittsburgh. Nice. <laughs> That's going to be a busy two weeks right there. You're going to oh, go yeah. to OKC, That's and then then you've got Taylor Swift right after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you said a lot of your teammates are funny. Who's the funniest? Oh, gosh. Who is the funniest? 
Um, Can't be yourself. Or no. coach more. Yeah. Because he kind of <laughs> takes the cake. Um, I hang out with uh, Grace Chavez a lot. Okay. I think Grace is hilarious. Um, but also, I... Uh, have you guys ever met Brie Peck? Brie Peck yes. is hilarious. I okay. love her so much. <laughs> Right. We kind of see, I mean, we yeah. kind of see everyone in a media standpoint. Definitely a little different. Favorite spot to eat in Blacksburg and why? Blacksburg. Oh my gosh. Let me think. Where do I go all the time? Um. Ooh, every time my parents come into town, we go to the cellar. That's okay. our favorite spot. We go there a lot. So shout out the cellar. Shout wanna, out the cellar. Nick, you bring want us an home. NIL deal right there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. that's, what, that's the cellar. exactly what that was for. Maybe some hot wings and pizza. From there. <laughs> there you go. Bring us home. One more fun question. <laughs> most excited, you, most ex- games you're most excited about an upcoming schedule mm-hmm. in, I guess, the ACC. We're going to go with ACC. So home games we so you have, can prep the crowds. We have, we have a lot of big home oh, games yeah. this year. Um, I don't think Duke has ever been here. Uh, so that's a, that's a big one. Okay. Um and then Florida State and Clemson are back-to-back weekends. Yes. So those will be two be really fantastic. big ones. I'm hoping a lot of people will come out to those. It'll be so, warm weather um, games too. Yeah, April, and so. I'm excited for Clemson. My um, One of my best friends is a pitcher for Clemson. Mm. Lives like 15 minutes down the road from me. So you can so. outdo them. Won't be yeah. friends on uh, on those three days. No, no. 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 <laughs> right after, though, we can be friends again. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Emma, that we didn't ask you that you want Hokie Nation to know about you? Oh. Uh, Thank you guys have covered everything. Even the Taylor Swift part. I mean, <laughs> geez, Perfect. you guys got everything. You know everything about me now. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Lemley, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us on your Monday. This was a fun one for Nick Brown, for Emma Lemley. I'm Giovanni Heater signing off from Blacksburg. This was your triumph spotlight on TSL today.